So, hey guys, thanks for coming to the meeting BBM today. So we're gonna be going over um, like NFTs and kind of how to make your own. Uh, so we have Maria is gonna walk you through. Yeah, that's Maria, woo. Um, walk you through kind of a workshop. Um, we don't know if we'll get through everything today and we'll, uh, if we don't, we'll, we'll give you kind of guidance on how to do it or we'll have like a part two workshop, I guess, but she's gonna walk you through um, live right now, right here. And uh, yeah, and hopefully you enjoy. It's really cool. So I hand it over to Maria. Yeah, thank you very much, Antonio. And most likely we will not finish today. So yeah, yeah, I'm going to share my screen and we can start. So how many of you are familiar with the Ethereum? Can you raise your hand? Good question. So um, what is, who have heard the word Ethereum? Okay, uh, who is a creator of Ethereum? Vitalik. Multiple people, but Vitalik Blue is yeah. not the most iconic. You also have Charles Hoskins. And right, like the face of uh, a brand face, right? And uh, let's uh, also maybe um, say our names first to get to know each other closer. My name is Maria, so I'll be asking a couple of more questions. And uh, by the way, so we have uh, also prepared these uh, resources just like to start. I know that uh, we have a room full of experts here in Ethereum, but anyhow, Antonia will be sharing the link to our presentation slides uh, where we collected some just like very basic knowledge and links to very basic information about Ethereum. If you feel like you've missed something or you want to refresh your knowledge, so this would be here. And uh, let's take a short quiz. Uh, at the beginning, you can scan the QR code. Since we are all very familiar with, this, with the topic, might not be too What's the com URL? complicated. <laughs> uh, let me uh, type it in chat. Like, could you enlarge it? You don't have to like, read it. So I'm posting the URL link also in the chat, in the Zoom chat. Or you wanted me to enlarge this thing? Oh, sorry. Is it possible to make the image bigger? Yeah, can you make this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start the slideshow. Yes, of course. Okay. Okay, so the technology in our phones is not as precise yet. Okay, everyone got it. I'm gonna go and see, check these answers. So I'll just uh, quickly go over the quiz if you have already responded. So we already talked about that Ethereum had multiple, has had uh, multiple co-founders and uh, many of these people started their own uh, pretty famous uh, projects, either their own blockchains, either big organizations in the space. One of them consensus, you might know it, uh, which also created the consensus, created the MetaMask infrastructure of a digital wallet for individuals and also for the corporate, which we are going to interact with today. So if uh, this is just a general question, if one Bitcoin is uh, 100 million Satoshi, the one Ether is A, B, C, D. What's that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah, so basically, it's just a general question. You can Google it. It's for the divis uh, divisibility of the Ether, a uh, native cryptocurrency of Ethereum blockchain. And as you know, like we don't pay when we purchase something in crypto, we don't pay necessarily in a discrete number of uh, crypto tokens but they can be divided further and like to very little fraction of one one token so basically this also will help us to understand how our uh, transactions are processed why we pay for transactions like very fractional amount but we still like send that money to the uh, system to the miners who will process our transaction and uh, the last question basically covers how well you know or like how uh, much experience you have with the ethereum blockchain so, so does anyone have any estimate for now like for the answer for the last question how much the question is how much on average does it cost to process transaction on ethereum with priority three in usd as of right now the priority fee or like the gas and the priority sorry what can you say your name first? Oh, well, that was me. Oh, yeah, just ah. sorry. <laughs> the priority fee or the priority plus the like the, the gas fee? Uh, okay, so it's gas fee. Okay. Gas fee with priority three, so like the lowest. Right now, probably uh, in ETH. Or okay. What you say? In USD, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna take a stab at it. Yeah, so a hundred hundred dollars for three, three is high. I think it's too much. No, okay. I think it's too much. So basically there are uh, resources just online calculators. Uh, this presentation that we are going to share the link with has some uh, links to those uh, uh, online calculator, like how much does it cost to process transaction on Ethereum blockchain at the time. It's very dynamic, it changes. Um, every second or every like two three seconds as far as i checked i was tracking like uh, refreshing the page and who knows why this transaction fee is changing is it is because the price of ethereum changes or or is it because like the more users the the volume yeah. okay okay yeah, what's your name? Sorry, what's your name first? Oh, Sahas. Sahas, nice to meet you. What's your name? Hi, Raghav. So it depends on the volume exactly. Like if people are uh, like willing to pay more fees for that single transaction, for like, uh, for example, if I want to do a transaction and if I want to do it fast, so people are uh, willing to pay more. So then it accommodates like how it changes. This is how it changes dynamically. If more people are there, so they will be willing to pay more gas fees for that particular transaction. So. Yeah, so that's how the gas prices Yeah, exactly. If we were to speak like, you know, if we were to sit in economics class and if we were to speak in economics terms, basically the price is de uh, defined by the supply and demand. Supply is exactly uh, the amount of computing power that is present at a particular moment, which serves the Ethereum blockchain transactions. You, well, you are all very aware of miners who, have the ASICs or like basically some machines which do these calculations of like searching hash and then, the, or rather nonce in the hash, and they will basically verify whether the, your transaction will be added to the block. So this is like the supply side of a computing power miners. There is also the demand side, as uh, uh, we already talked about, that these are the amount of users and how much transactions they want to process at this side, uh, at this mo particular moment. So depending on the balance of these two aspects, the price will be dynamically changing. And um, actually, since we're talking already about transaction, uh, probably one last uh, like technicality that I think that we should understand. So who knows how fast the transaction on the Ethereum blockchain is being processed? It takes a lot of time comparatively, like around three, three minutes, four minutes. Sometimes if it's fast, then one minute, two minutes. Right. And so what does it mean for us? 
that means there are more number of blocks and the sub like the miners are less who are uh, processing the transaction hash and the people who are uh, putting up the blocks of uh, uh, transactions are more that's why uh, okay so basically uh correct me if i'm understanding it uh in different way that you mean that people are submitting their transactions uh there is a line of transactions that are to be verified by miners and it takes some time for miners to do their computations so the transactions come in an order like uh either it's lifo uh, or fifo like uh first in first out or uh, we can also pay an additional fee, like increase the priority of our transaction and push our uh, transaction uh, like to the top of the line to get processed it quicker. Right. OK, so um, next we are going to see the transaction lifecycle on Ethereum blockchain. I think that uh, we have a resource which uh, actually is very uh, visual and explains everything very visually so basically there, is, there are like six main stages how our transactions from the moment when we click that we send someone money or we buy ether or basically any other cryptocurrency so the transactions have to pass through certain stages so let's take a look at how they can be visualized these stages. Okay, so on the left side here, we can see like all our um, digital ball wallets, all different tokens. Basically, this this what we interact with. We interact with MetaMask. We interact with uh, uh, MakerDAO. Uh, I believe it's a Uniswap, or this one is Uniswap. Somewhere with a unicorn. So OpenSea. So we, we interact with all this kind of like layer two infrastructure, which has a nice interface and like we can click it on our smartphone and we purchase, exchange, swap, do any anything else with our tokens. All these tokens come into the queue that we just discussed right now. And then these are blocks blocks are basically verified by miners there are a certain amount of transactions that can be fit in one block so it's like a little trains or like little wagons of a train that uh, these passengers which are our transactions get in so as you see like the crowd waits here until their time comes and uh, then with uh, with some time they will get into certain block. Once the transaction gets into the block, it stays there like technically forever. So we cannot reverse it. The record about our transaction stays on the blockchain and uh, everyone can see it, but no one can link it to our uh, identity. So here are the just, uh, Oh, yeah. Okay, so here are the six stages or oh, five stages of the transaction lifecycle. First is a P2P network. So basically that's that's the how we interact with all these apps and Ethereum. Then uh, the transaction is being broadcast to the network in a communication phase. After that, that's exactly when our uh, little transactions comes into queue. Then we have the validation stage when the network nodes validates the transaction. And um, after the particular one transaction is validated and it's added to the block, it's already verified. And next is the final stage is the confirmation. So after the confirmation happens, uh, our transaction is on the blockchain forever. So since there are like, now you see like the, there are micro processes within this life cycle of our transaction. So it takes some time for us to process each of the transactions on a blockchain. However, it's not a actually exclusive for the blockchain. 
who knows how fast uh, transaction like bank uh, transfer happened? What like, the? like instant, right? Oh, uh, not really. Not instant. It, it could be like one to three days, I believe. I mean, it's not like bank, like Venmo is like one to three days if you do like a normal transaction. That's not a bank. Though, so yeah. Although you have right. What's your name? Alex. Alex. You actually have a, a good point because we see it instantly. But in fact, if we would try to send even from Wells Fargo account to Bank of America account, it might take several days because there are little, little, little steps how the money from like, you know, the number from our account comes actually to the account of our friend. So I'm just trying to underlie here that though there is a lot of conversation about like how long does it take to verify a transaction? Yes, it does because we see how long it takes, three minutes or 10 minutes. But uh, in the traditional finance, the real verification also takes time. Okay, so um, enough with the theory, let's... Uh, do some practice here. So how many of you have a MetaMask account? Wallet, rather. Okay, so for those who uh, don't, I encourage you to join our workshop and uh, follow us. And for those who do have a MetaMask account, you will be our helpers and maybe you will assist uh, people to through the process. How about that? Work, collaboration. Great. Okay, so while you're like uh, turning on your laptops, you can also install MetaMask account on your phone, by the way. Uh, you will not need pretty much anything from, it does not need to any verification ID. It's just as, as simple as create an account on any other application. Uh, you, there will be a couple of things that you will need to memorize, and I believe that Matthew covered a couple of uh, those steps in a previous uh, hour of our meeting. And just to give you a broader idea why we want to install the uh, digital wallet, such as the MetaMask, because if we want to interact with digital assets, which reside on the blockchain, we will definitely need a digital wallet. Uh, one of those assets that uh, we can we will be covering in our like we will be talking later in the further meetings are the nfts we're going to learn how to create our own nfts and for that purpose we will also need to have our digital wallet set up so consider this as a prep or part one to be ready to start creating your nft so basically, just like a quick showcase, if you go to OpenSea right now, super quick, and you basically, you can just uh, click explore. How many of you own NFTs? Which NFTs do you own? I'm curious. Uh, I have my ENS domain, Rogue Radio, and IRL PA Pass. So are those all like collectibles or are there what category are they in? So the ENS domain, just like instead of having to type in my address anywhere, I can just type in my ENS domain and send it straight to me. Oh. It's pretty clever, I think. A, um, the other ones are the rug radio is like you, it's still a little vague, but you get to accrue a like tokens over time and use them in like their online market. And they're also like long term trying to build like from my understanding, like the first ever decentralized media platform, but we'll see how that goes. I just think it's like, I like the creator, so I bought a new project. Okay. And then the other one is they're going to host like IRL events. So I bought it mint price and it was pretty nice. Oh, really cool. So they do really like carry some utility that you can actually like use. Yeah, I mean, it's not, I don't think it's really ideal to buy one that has no utility. I, uh, well, collectibles, <laughs> no one canceled <laughs> those. I feel like if you invest like in a moment's utility, you just more of high, like a higher likelihood that you'll get your investment back, if not more, especially if it's like a good team who knows what they're doing. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the ones I invested in are run by people who know what they're doing or are going to do something different and better. Okay, I like that. 
Uh, what NFTs do you invest in? So one is Space Poggers. So it's, it's, it's a collectible, but they organize Discord competitions or something. Uh, like Who have Space Poggers, they organize competitions on Discord. And second is Zedron. So it's basically a digital horse racing platform. So if you oh. own the horses, so you can uh, basically, uh, yeah, yeah, we can also breed also. So there are different classes of horses from which we can breed and make new horses and legendary horse, like there are different classes. So it's an online racing, horse racing platform. Cool. So you buy a horse? Yeah. Your NFT is a horse? Oh, wow. Uh, this is not me, but my friend actually owns an NFT horse for that exact reason. Oh, <laughs> so you can compete, tell your friend that you have a <laughs> rival here. <laughs> okay. cool. Amazing. So anyhow, pick one uh, NFT that you like on an open sea. And uh, for example, I'll just go to the first one that I can, I can see. So anyhow, uh, oh, this one is to place a bit, but anyhow, let's try. So when I click on like any button on the open sea platform, like place a bit or by now, uh, you see that it prompts you instantly to pick up your digital wallet. There are multiple options. Matthew gave, gave an excellent overview and like speech how to uh, pick your digital wallet, what types of di uh, digital wallets uh, there are. But as of today, I would uh, offer you to pick MetaMask uh, as this is one of the most popular, the one of the earliest, most popular, and it's backed up by a, a big, big, big development team. So clicking on the MetaMask, it will prompt you straight to the web page for downloading the Chrome extension of MetaMask. If you're doing it from your phone, I believe that you will be prompted to the Android or app market and install it from there. Oh, my network is not good. By the way, uh, if you're using the digital wallets, what other, what is the digital wallet that you're using the most frequently? Oh, definitely MetaMask. MetaMask? Yeah, yeah MetaMask too. MetaMask too? Okay. Have you downloaded MetaMask already? Because I'm having trouble with the network, I guess. Looks like you already have the extension. The oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, I already have an extension on the uh, on my computer. So if you are looking for what's that? MetaMask, uh, Chrome extension, right? If we go, we will be able to easily add it or remove. So as you go through the installation process, it will ask you to create your username, create your password, and also it will give you a, a seed phrase, which is the set of random words, which is unique for your account. And it's kind of like your securest way to protect your MetaMask wallet. It will prompt you if you read carefully through the, all the letters, all the words, sentences that it gives you. It will say that save it somewhere in a very secure place. This is your only way to recover your funds. Let me actually also go to see. Oh, we have uh, plenty of answers here in chat. Thank you very much, Bryce, for your 
participation. Yes, Matthew. Oh, wow. We have a lot of expertise here hidden in chat. <laughs> Matthew saying that he is also using using the algorithm wallet. Woohoo! Yeah. Uh, by the way, I believe that everyone is aware already about the amazing opportunity that came with the uh, uh, the cooperation partnership with the Algorand Blockchain Algorand Foundation uh, that allowed uh, that actually like Marco Professor Marco is here today with us who actually is the primary investigator PI on this uh, huge, huge, huge grant and a great opportunity for the university in general and Florida in general. It's uh, adding even more value for like putting Florida on a map of being a blockchain nation and its big uh, role, big role of UF in this. Okay, so have you created already the wallet? How many have a wallet right now? I feel a little more secure because my Google translates everything in the <laughs> language of setup. And like, I knew you spoke a different language. Like, I, I saw you. it. Hopefully, and I was it's like, not like the screen, you know, the screen share, but you're good. Well, yeah, at first I was like, I, I, I didn't think you could read it. And then I was like, wait a second, I totally can. <laughs> I just can't read it. Yeah. And then you didn't I didn't know it. if you were going to make a dummy. Done with, uh, okay. yeah, or not. Well, wallet, yeah, done wallet. I didn't know how it worked when you uh, remove it. I guess you could have the option to create a new one. Okay. Yeah, you have. Or, yeah, I, yeah, I know. You can create as many wallets as uh, you wish. And actually, that's one of the ways how you can. I don't know, like, if it's correct way to put it to hide the trace. <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, trying to put in my seed phrase, and that's why I stopped sharing. Secret. Yes, yes. Well, for the purposes of uh, today's activity, we won't be using like very extensive funds, or we won't be spending actually anything. Uh, just uh, practicing a good safety routine. I think it's good even in a sandbox. So let's do it. Oh, I'm all set. Okay, never mind. So I'm going to reshare the screen again. Okay, so just a little navigation here. I know that seed phrase takes uh, some time. So take your time, but I'm going to go forward and talk a little bit. So one of the uh, most important ideas that you will be using in many, many, many transactions, operations when developing NFTs or any other applications on the blockchain is the uh, account ID. And it's usually at the top of your MetaMask wallet. If you want to copy it, it's very easy. You just click on it and it's already copied. Then you have a... Um, currency like a account balance pretty much similar to like our how you say like private banking account right so you can see the account balance you can buy you can um send i probably need to switch um you can uh, send you can swap so buy if you want to purchase some uh funds like you can you want to purchase Ether, for example, or any other cryptocurrency from Ethereum blockchain, other tokens. We can, uh, you can also explore and to see uh, that it's possible to do. So for example, Ether, you can uh, buy through like third parties, like exchanges, centralized, decentralized. And uh, that's those third party resources where you can use your credit card and transfer funds 
like digital assets in your uh, MetaMask wallet. You can send someone uh, the some funds. For that, you will need to know this account ID of the person who is the recipient of the funds, whom I'm going to send. And you can also swap. Swapping through your MetaMask wallet means that, for example, if you have like 10 Ether, you are in pretty good shape, but also you can swap them to any other token, um, DAI, or any others, any other tokens that you want. And um, I actually went to the swapping and I read how they do it. So MetaMask uh, basically guarantees that you will get like the best rate swapping one cryptocurrency to other cryptocurrency, but always do your own research and it's better to check twice. So uh, another step that we are going to do. Uh, so now we are linked to the main Ethereum net. So can someone explain me what the main net is and what's the test net, how test net is different from main net? I mean, it's just like the official one, right? And the test net's like more open for like develop, like if you want to try something on it. Okay, yeah, it's like sandbox, yeah. like not not real. So yeah, I was just gonna say main net is where all the transactions are like validated. So like, yeah, you obviously don't want to do any testing on it. It's gonna be way more expensive. You're gonna pay all the gas fees in order to just. Do something that you know if you screwed up or something doing your smart contract you're putting it on um you know the essential main uh main net but uh obviously it has a way in the uh, ethereum virtual machine to be able to utilize the same technology but doing it kind of side chain so but yeah add to that yeah. <laughs> So basically, uh, in the mainnet, we have uh, assets which have liquidity in the real uh, real time. Uh, like everything has a liquidity, and everything that is happening that is real. But in the testnet, basically, it's a clone of the mainnet. Uh, uses uh, with, uh, it uses the same EVM, uh, same uh, code, and it's the virtual assets which does not have liquidity in the market or any exchanges. So it's like virtual assets we can get free uh, ten ether or something for testing. Basically, if you want to upload it to the mainnet, basically, uh, before you can test on the testnet, uh, if your contract is going through. It's like a paper account, if you're familiar yeah. with like stocks or trading, it's like, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> How many of you are familiar with paper account? <laughs> okay, I would say it's mainnet is your final exam. Testnet is your scratch paper. Whatever you do in a scratch paper doesn't matter as long as you don't spend like put the incorrect answer on your uh, test final test exam. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to enable the visibility of test nets and connect to one of the popular, I would say, test net to just play around and not really get involved in the all the purchasing and spending money. So to do that, so if you go uh, up, you could see like the main Ethereum net here. And if you click, you are, you are right now linked to the main, uh, main net. If you click, you can only select the main net here. However, go to your account here, go to settings, uh, advanced, and you will see show test nets. Can everyone see? I, I don't think that this is of much help. <laughs> That's why I'm saying like settings, advanced and show test nets. So once we switch on, we can go back to, okay, I need to probably refresh my browser. No, why not? Oh, test, show test networks, right. So now if I click down here, I can choose to which net, to which test net I can connect. So we're going to, to connect to Rinkeby. So now we're in a safe environment. Make sure that you connect it to Rinkeby and or any other like test net if you're like working on other projects which are based off the other, uh, other test net and you are in a safe environment. Whatever you do actually like, this won't be graded. 
Okay, so uh, let's close this, but you're still now have uh, zero funds, right? So we basically cannot do anything. One reason for that, if we even want to do some interaction with a platform, like for example, buy NFT for zero ETH, or like on a Rinkeby testnet, we still need to pay gas fee. So when you see the price for some, for something is zero, but it's uh, perf it's the asset which resides on blockchain. It will you will still have to pay certain amount for the processing power. Yes. Okay. So how to get money to your test net test account? So if you're joined us through Zo through Zoom, I have sent the link to the Zoom chat. And uh, the link is called um, that we're going to go is called faucets dot chain dot link slash rinkeby. Okay, so this is uh, the resource. There are plenty of other resources. Basically, all these resources which can give you like a free tokens are called faucets. You can search for like just like a faucet for like certain currency and you will be directed to a particular website that gives you this. So they have different process of verification. This one, I find it like super easy and very quick. So this is um, it, it uh, gives uh, some funds, some link, and it gets, you can get also 0.1 test ETH. That's what we need right now. So now that you know the, where to find the account of your MetaMask wallet, go ahead and uh, request 0.1 ETH to your MetaMask account. Oh no, not captured. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, and you can also like select here different uh different oh. test nets, but we are staying on Ethereum ring about. Yeah, let me see what's happening here. Yeah, it's not working for me either. No? How come? That's uh, corruptly. Okay, so let's then search for the other uh, UK by faucet. So this one I know it used to give, but oh, you it gave it. What that? You have to do Twitter link. We have to post a Twitter link here. Like to request from this faucet, we have to tweet or. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Okay, so which one then we can use? I generally use this one, but let me search. Okay, some comments from the chat. Matthew shares the or yeah, analogy. Yeah. Uh, can you uh, send it to Discord? Really? Uh, uh, like, Please. Uh, one second. And just let us know which <laughs> friend can you send it to. <laughs> Okay, have you sent? I don't have the permission to post. Oh, introduction. I'm... Yeah, introduction. Okay. 
portion the link on the introduction. On introduction, okay. Oh, amazing. So the link is now on the in the introductions in the Discord channel. If you're not on our Discord, please sign up and join. Okay, so in our logic here. Oh, can you... uh, if you can, if you want, like you can post your uh, Ethereum address on the Discord. I can send you a test speaker. I have already test speaker. Okay, awesome. Uh, did everyone get to the test Ether? Who got test Ether? Raise your hand. By the way, the link 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 faucet also already works. So I just like put it and uh, it gives uh, 0.1 ETH. So it works now. Let's yeah, it works now. So let's wait for everyone to request their ETH. And so again here, it does not happen instantly because we requested it and the, uh, this like, though it's test net, it has like the similar principle of like work as the main net. Uh, there are still, uh, there is still some time needed to verify our transaction because if we request that it means that someone is sending us, not someone, but like the system is sending, dispensing this money and it still needs to go through like all the stages of the transaction. This is a valid transaction mechanism just on a test net. Uh, by the way, so while we're waiting here, we can see that uh, on our first line and second line, we can see that there are two transaction hashes. So transaction hash is basically the unique identifier of a transaction. And if we click on the second one, so right here, oh yes, we are unable to. So when we click on a transaction hash, like in pretty much, I don't know, like it always happens to me when I click on it. And uh, if it's uh, hyperlinked, it redirects me to the uh, kind of like blockchain scanner in this case, it's Ether scan because uh, the Rinkibai is a uh, based off the Ether Ethereum technology, and it has this nice web page where we can track basically any transaction, any account, any contract. Um, yeah, blocks. We can also like search by blocks, and um, I I will just quickly go so through Etherscan. It might be helpful if you are, for example, uh, waiting for a transaction approval or waiting for some transfer. You can check if someone already kind of like sent money, but it not has been yet delivered to your account. And this tool allows for a lot of visibility. And this is something like transparency, right? This is something that is like one of the main values of the blockchain. So, Let's see if we have received our ETH. Not yet. It takes a lot of time today. Last time I requested it, I probably received it in less than a minute. So if you like, why will you still waiting? Uh, so if you go back to your MetaMask account, one thing there is, if you click on this, like, like sometimes they call it kebab. I don't know if you're familiar with that, like three dots. 
three vertical dots, right? So if you click on these three vertical dots and you click on the view account on Etherscan, it will exactly redirect you to your profile, profile of your account on this like transparency tool. So my account is clean because I have not received the requested ETH, test ETH yet. I have not sent anyone. So it's like fresh account. And um, basically I cannot, there is no other information here. However, let me, um, let me see. However, if I go to like some other address, for example, that I don't know, someone else's account, I will be able to see like all the transaction history uh, in um, on this Ethereum blockchain. I can see basically the transaction hash, uh, different methods. Those are just like, uh, actually those methods will, uh, will tell us also about like what activity the account has made on the different applications which interacts with the blockchain. All transactions are, all, all activities in general on the blockchain are timestamped. So you can easily see uh, the, like it shows an age, it does not show the exact uh, date, but uh, the transaction details, I believe they have exact time timestamp in the UTC. Right. So it has the transaction, the account, which who sent to which, no, oh, no, it's a contract, contract number. How many of you have uh, interacted with the smart contracts? One, two, both NFTs, right? Or any other interactions? No. Do you, do you develop? No. Can you tell us more about like, what, what, what do you develop the smart contracts for? Basically, uh, I work in uh, Solidity Smart Contract Development, so I work for a launch part, uh, cri cryptocurrency launch parts. Oh, so basically, uh, which one? the work was to create a campaign. It was for a pre-sale, okay. kind of for IDO. So that was the campaign contract. So then uh, those met that, that, that the campaign contract I created. And in that, there were several methods like approval, buy, send, and all these functions. So basically, I uh, interacted in the way of contracts. Okay, so these contracts were for the tokens, right? Uh, for uh, basically for a project, uh -huh. or, or like uh, it, it's a launch pad. So launch pad, what what they do is they conduct IDOs for several projects. So this is kind of a fundraising platform. Uh -huh. So that is a fundraising campaign. Cam campaign is a fundraising platform where you can buy the tokens uh, before the project is launched. I see pre-sale. Yeah, pre-save. It's called Launchpad, right? I want to want to Google. Oh. So you can search Polka Startup. It's kind of a Launchpad. And you spell that. Polka Startup. P O L K A. Ah. Oh. Polka Startup. Starter. Huh. Ah, Polka starter. Okay. So does it, uh, is it somehow related to Polkadot? Yes. Yeah. It's not exactly uh, like first they brought up with the idea uh, on the Polkadot ecosystem. Then they expanded mm -hmm. to different, different ecosystems, Matic, uh, Ethereum, Binance, Smart Chain, all these different, different. So it's, it's one of the biggest launch pads out there. Is it like a Kickstarter? Yeah, but it's yeah exactly. Polkadot. Exactly. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Kickstarter. Yeah. Oh. That's interesting. That's cool. Does anyone else uh, like buy? It's not mine. I'm not saying it's not mine. I, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm saying it's an example of sure. a launch pad. Right. Yeah, yeah, we got this. You made this. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So uh, do you have some tips on <laughs> where to invest? <laughs> Joke, you don't have to answer. Uh, did anyone else uh, invested in ICOs, pre-sale, whitelisting? 
So yeah, basically whitelisting also comes in this in this thing, whitelisting campaigns. Hey. Uh, so you in, you participated, Joseph, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. How was your experience? Various whitelists. I mean, different. Sometimes they're projects. Just sometimes they're NFT projects. Sometimes they're initial coin offerings. Um, yeah, you get to basically shill for the project and be early on and then have certain channels, talk to people. And, yeah. But, yeah. Okay. I see. So uh, I will return to my account. I have not received the funds yet. Has anyone received the funds on their account? No, not yet. I have the funds. If you want, you can post your uh, like, account on the Discord. I can send you a OK, so I suggest that, that if you guys want to receive uh, some funds, you can, like from this like test wallet that we're making right now, uh, send the uh, direct message probably or just like post um i don't know like i would not recommend to post it on the uh like public channel yeah rather just like do it privately yeah uh, yeah and um get some funds yeah because i have some funds on my other account so <laughs> it's okay same account, uh, the main account with the same same private key like it's a test account you created, right? Yeah. So that like that will not harm you in harm you in kind of way because it's a new fresh account. This like the seed phrase is different. So yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter like if you post it. On. Yeah, I mean just like whichever you prefer, basically. Uh, so uh, one like a couple of uh, things that I think that we need to know. I already show quickly like went over how to interact with the ether, ether scan, right? How many of you used the ether scan before? Or like any other scan, like Bitcoin scan? Okay, so um, again, like to go to the ether scan, probably the easiest way from your MetaMask account would be to kind of like view your account on ether scan. You can also type etherscan.io and um, you will be able to see your address. Uh, but a uh, couple of things that we want to know how to do, we want to know how to search the particular smart, smart contracts. And why is that? Because if we go to, like, again, we go back to our core purpose, why we do this, why we do install this uh, digital wallet, because we want to, be able to purchase digital assets, transfer them, sell them, and do all these activities. So each, let's say like we're looking at NFT, right? Each NFT on the OpenSea platform, they have this uh, little section details where we can see um, the contract address, token ID, token standard, basically, and the blockchain where it resides. So most, like, I would say like 90, over 90% actually tokens, NFTs, currently are made, uh, are reside on Ethereum. What is the second in, uh, blockchain that NFTs are currently increasing? Yeah. Do you have any, anything from Solana? Actually, one more in a giveaway. <laughs> Sell it or just gave it away? No, it was just in a giveaway I entered, because why not, right? Oh, you won one in a giveaway. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see, I see. Yeah, and uh, there are actually like a multitude of different other blockchains, like Polygon is another one that uh, enables us to create NFTs, but uh, most of them are created on Ethereum. So, and why is that? Because Ethereum was one of the first one to offer like all this infrastructure for like third party creators. It's like, it enabled us to basically create something of our own like our own NFT. And NFT in its essence, it's kind of like a smart contract, which also has some picture on top of it, if we may say so. So why we want to know how to interact with the ether scan, because we want to know to see how to see what is inside the smart contract. So from the OpenSea page of uh, the particular digital asset, 
you can click on the smart contract and it will uh, at, it will redirect you to the ether scan where we can see like all history of transactions with uh, which interacted with this particular smart contract uh like the value of each of the transactions but what most importantly about uh, the smart contract that we want to know how to do we want to uh, know how to see into to look into the smart contract so there is this tab uh, the first tab is transactions the third tab is contract and that's where we are going to see the source code of our smart contract and if we have like a proper knowledge if we know like where to look and how to read it we are able to see what is really written in that contract Okay, I think that as for the um, interactions and the um, practical part, we'll stop here today. It's six uh, twelve already, and um, thanks uh, very much for the participation and sharing your experience. We're not saying goodbye yet, but uh, is there anything that uh, we need to like talk about? or you want to talk a lot uh, about more, share your experience, how you went through this uh, workshop. Were you able to navigate to open a uh, smart contract to see the code of smart contract? Because why is that important? Because when you're creating your own NFT, you don't necessarily need to know how to code it, code it from scratch. You can go to a particular like NFT that you like or that you purchase. You can see the source code. You can copy the code, change a couple of things. One of them is like amount of royalties that you want to get paid from a secondary transactions, the name of your NFT, and just basically create your own NFT. And that's what we're going to do in our next meeting, which will be in two weeks time. At least we're going to start. OK, thank you very much. I think I won't be standing here anymore. And uh, let's just um, roam around and talk. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>